Okay, guys, welcome back to St George's Park for this press conference with Anthony Gordon. Um, just a reminder, this is embargoed until 6am tomorrow, Thursday. Um, and then we'll have a short section at the end, embargoed until 10.30pm tomorrow as well. Um, as ever, if we can sort of initially keep three questions each, then hopefully we can get around the room. So, Rob, do you want to get started? Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, it's a pretty standard but traditional opening question that we would say. How does this feel? How special is it? And how did you find out? Very special. Um, it's hard to describe, really. You know, you chase this goal for the, for your whole life, your whole footballing career, and then you finally get it. It just means it means everything to me. And yeah, I found out through a text. So when I got the, the text, I was just so happy. I found out just before I went out to training, and sorry to say, well, training just didn't matter for that day. I had, uh, it just played on my mind all day. Did you tell all your teammates were they with you at the time? Trips was next to me. Was he? Um, so, like, perfect uh, person to be next to me. And, yeah, I just showed him and he was, uh, he was buzzing for me. Uh, it, it, it won't have escaped your notice that this first friendly is quite a special one. Hmm. England don't often play Brazil, um, one of the, the real superpowers and probably the you know, most glamorous team in the world. What would it mean to you to get the chance to make your debut against Brazil at Wembley? I don't think there's a better game, to be honest. Um, Brazil's national team, as you said, it's just so so rich in history, so many good players. Um, and with the, the squad we've got at the minute, I don't think there's a better game in national football. So it'd be, be so good, obviously. It's, there's no guarantee, but yeah, it'd mean everything to me. It's been a heck of a couple of years for you, let's be honest, uh, since the move <coughs> and, and even before that. But it was only six months ago we were talking about you potentially playing for Scotland. It was very clear how, what they thought of you and how much they wanted you to play for them. So how realistic was that as an option for you? You know, potentially switching allegiances and playing for... I think it's your grandparents that are, that are Scottish, is it? So it was never never a thought for me. Um, and that's no, no disrespect to, to Scotland at all. I just think I've been tunnel visioned on playing for England since I was five, six years old and nothing could ever shake that off. And I could never forgive myself if I never got to this point. Um, and yeah, like I said, it's just a dream I've had from so young, so nothing else has ever entered my mind at any time. Hi, Anthony. At Hi. the same time, there was talk around uh, Scotland, Gareth Southgate obviously said that you were close to getting into the squad as well. What was that like to, to hear when you, when you weren't named? Yeah, very, very reassuring. Um, I, was, I was performing well, you know, I was, I was working hard and the season was going well for me, so just to hear him say that, I was in the thought and I was close. It just gave me just a little boost to, to, to carry on and yeah, knowing I'm not too far away in the games just made me run that little bit harder. There's so much talent in this England squad, especially in the forward areas. What's it like as a player that plays in those positions, <coughs> looking from the outside and then trying to break into it? Yeah, from, from the outside trying to break into it, it's really difficult because you know you've got to be you know really consistent on your best form to even get near the squad because because of the level that, that's around me um, in my positions. But, you know, I've been able to do that this year and now I'm just relishing it because I get to train and stuff and the standard's so high. And I'm just, I'm loving it because I'm getting to learn from, you know, the best players in the country. And similar to Joe Gomez, who we've just spoken to, you can play in a, a number of positions. You won player of the tournament at the under-21 Euros last summer. Do you think that will give you a, a good chance of breaking into the squad and something you feel that you bring differently to other players? Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah, because I think it helps if you have players that play in different positions, um, which I can, and I sort of pride myself on that, and whatever I'm asked to do, I try and do it to the, the best of my ability. I played in a lot of positions this year, probably three, four different ones, but like I said, I really like the challenge and trying to get better, and yeah, I just love improving, so playing me in different positions, I, I to see it as a challenge, and I'm really happy to do it. Congratulations on the Thank call you. up. I know Eddie Howe will have you prepared <laughs> um, for the technical challenge of coming into this training session. You said when you first went to Newcastle, though, you had to uh, introduce yourself to some players that you'd already gone toe to toe with. Was that the same in this training session? You know what? Surprisingly, not. I don't. I don't think I've had any uh, any moments like that with anyone in the squad. But um, yeah, with some unbelievable uh, players and characters. So. I was a little bit nervous coming into the squad, of, of course, because I'd never met a lot, a lot of the lads before. Um, but that went away quick. You know, we've got such a good group 
so many good characters and, and leaders. And yeah, that, them nerves went pretty quickly. You've talked really nicely about school. You said, I want to be a footballer. And, and your teacher <coughs> said, well, you better have a backup education. Mm. And you were like, no, I'm going to focus on being a footballer. Are you going to focus on getting in the squad with this opportunity? Yeah, I was speaking about this uh, recently when I got the call up. Because after I got the call up, that sort of vanished out my mind and made my goal change very quickly. Because I don't want to come here and, and then leave. My goal is to stay here and be impactful and have a real impact on the squad. So football moves on and if you sort of bask in your glory, that's not a good recipe. Um, so like I said, my goal changed quickly and now there's even more to play for. Um, and Bruno, have you talked about coming up against Brazil and <laughs> yeah. Trips? What advice have they both said or what, what has Bruno warned you about Brazil? Well, Trips give me good advice about all the lads in the squad. He just said, don't worry, like you'll be fine. The staff are brilliant, the, the players are as well. Um, and yeah, I spoke to Bruno about, about the game. Like I said before, Brazil is such a, such a good team. He's a top, top player. And it just be really exciting to play against him, you know, and in that team. So Wembley, it doesn't get much better. And the holiday plans for the summer, what are you going to do? Nothing so far. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Um, not that it's a guarantee or anything like that, but I'm going to try and give myself the best chance as possible. Of course, that's my goal. That's my biggest aim that I've got at the minute is to, to be in that squad. So... Um, I'm sort of going to manifest if I'm not, not booking any holidays. Awesome. Uh, again, uh, Anthony, uh, congrats. Um, you Thank mentioned you. playing for England was a childhood dream, one that you've now realised. Obviously, uh, millions have it and some don't. But I just wondered, when you was running around, I don't know, the garden, the training pitch, the park, uh, whose name was you screaming and what was the scenario for that England debut when you screamed out, Gordon? <laughs> well, for me, it was always uh, Rooney and Gerrard because they were uh, from similar areas from, from where I'm from. So... Yeah, I just do always used to, like you said, run around in the garden from the youngest age I can remember and try and recreate goals, create my own types of goals. And yeah, I looked up to, the, to them massively. Mm -hmm. um, people always talking about things happen at the right time. Did you ever feel you were more ready than now? Or it's taken a while, but you feel this is as ready as you've ever been to seize the opportunity mm. and to be the player that you know you've always been? Yeah, that's a great way to look at it because I don't think I've ever been as consistent in my career so far. Um, and like I said before, if you're not doing that so regularly with the players I have around me, you're not going to get into this team. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I've ever been as ready as I am now. And I'm quite thankful for that because I get to show a good account of myself now. Whereas maybe if I come in a bit too early, it would have been a bit too early. So, yeah, it's all, it's all in good time and really happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, people talk about levels in football and obviously you've been at the top for <coughs> quite some time. But it's a first England training session with the senior team different than anything else? As in people talking, coming in and seeing one player in particular, or the way someone applies themselves, the, what they eat, what they sleep. Is that what you found as well? Yeah, I just think you you, you sort of see the intensity levels from, from the warm-up, really. Like, everything we do is so intense and done with a purpose. And it's because you all the best players in the country, they're all playing with purpose. Um, and yet some of the players are so impressive. Jude, High Kane, players like that. So impressive to see them up close. Okay, any of us in the live section? Yeah, James. Oh yeah, congratulations on the call up. Um, Thank you. You just wanted to follow up on you, when you said about um, playing for England—a dream since you were sort of five or six. I mean, you mentioned Rooney and Gerrard there, but what are your first sort of? You can make us all feel really old here, but <laughs> what are your first kind of memories of England? What, what what's the genesis of? I really wanted to play for England, not Scotland, not anyone else. It's always going to be England. Well, I think I've always just wanted to be at the very top of, of football. I think that's every kid's dream uh, who likes football. Um, and I think as a young English English kid, that's, that is the pinnacle, is to play for your country. So it's no extra motivation or a great story, but just just that, playing for England, it's, it's sort of that I think every kid dreams of. So, um, yeah, no, no special story of event about it, but I was just, that was my dream. What is the first tournament you remember with England? Good question. Um, first tournament. The one that sticks in my mind was when Sturridge scored against Wales. What tournament was that? 2016. That was actually a bit late, but I think that was like where I was I'm coming of age and I'm really taking notice of, of football and 
I just remember that goal for some reason. I celebrated like mad. And and obviously Gareth took over after that tournament. And and, and watching the progress from afar, <coughs> I know you've obviously been in with the 21s, but when you've seen the journey that the team's been on under Gareth, and now you're here and you can be a part of it, how how inspired are you by the progress that England have made in those last three tournaments? Yeah, very inspired. And I think me coming through the youth systems, I've been able to see the progression, not just in the, the senior team, but in the, the youth teams as well, because everything we were doing in terms of analysis of teams and our training, everything just kept improving year on year. Um, and as you've seen with the first team, they've just got better and better and better. And we're probably now in the strongest position that we've been in a long time. And it, it's sort of often argued that because of the success that the teams are having at youth level, that it's making players you know, more ready to step up. Is it, is, do, you, do you feel that, that that experience that you've had, particularly obviously with the under-21s, is going to help you now? Most definitely, because the standard under twenty ones was so high. You know, our team was was really, really good team. A lot of them play Premier League week in, week out at some big clubs. And I think just being in them environments and wanting to showcase what what you can do prepares you for for this environment. And I'm very thankful for all the experiences I had with all the youth the youth teams. Thank you. Thank you. Any follow ups? Matt, if we wait for the next section for you, just broadcasters first in this bit. Any of any of the broadcasters will be done. Kerry, do you want to come back for more? And then we'll come across. Cheers. You talk about Wayne Rooney, and I remember because I'm very old, sitting down and speaking to Alex to Sir Alex Ferguson about how you <coughs> get the best out of the player that crosses the line and can have a bit of an edge to his game. You've done a brilliant interview with Craig Hope just just recently talking about. Um, how Eddie Howe spoke to you after you went off and you were disappointed against being subbed against Brentford. You're going to be all right being on the bench for a bit for England. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> but what what has what influence has Eddie had on you? Because he was there was a big story made of it, and he made it very clear that you should not get the wrong impression about you as a player that you are you have an edge, but he doesn't want to lose that edge. So how has he helped you? with that edge and the, ba and the balance that's got the best performances out of you this season? I think it's just him understanding me and his man management is at a really good level. Um, at that time, I'm a young lad and I think he just understood what, what I needed at the time. Um, I'm really passionate and he's the same. He's so determined as a person. So I think he could see that, that fire in me, um, which is not a bad thing. It just needs some guidance, especially at a young age. Um, and he was the right man to guide me. So I'm, I'm really thankful that he was my manager at that time. And like I said, he's guided me into being a much more mature, um, level-headed person with also keeping that fire and keeping that motivation. And have you got an England baby grow? I will do. I will do. <laughs> I've thought about that. Um, I gave him a little kit and stuff. So uh, that's really exciting for me. Thanks. Okay, on to the embargo bit, section 1030.